Hello everyone, this is uh, Monsieur Lunaj, the instructor of uh, La Physique. And uh, today I'd like to address a few items that I have not addressed in class. Uh, if you recall, as far as relativity is concerned, we dealt with the idea of time dilation, uh, space contraction, uh, or length contraction to be uh, more specific. Uh, the idea of how mass changes and how momentum should be expressed in the context of special theory of relativity. That's what STI is standing for. What I have not addressed is how, uh, you know, how does relativity, special theory of relativity, deal with the concept of kinetic energy and how does it compare to the classical picture of what kinetic energy is all about. And actually I'd like to use that to conclude or to arrive at the formula for kinetic energy classically. The other thing too that I'd like to be able to address is the contrast between, you know, the Galilean, this is the Galilean uh, relativity concept of how velocities add when you've got systems that are in motion with respect to one another. And then we'll like to see how does this manifest itself in the context of the special theory of relativity. So, let's start first with the kinetic energy uh, deal. Well, we know that an object that is at rest that has a mass zero, m zero that rather, okay, will have an energy associated with it that is E sub zero equals to m zero c squared. This is the most famous formula that all of you should have known by now. And we already saw how it's used in class, okay? Now, if the object is moving on the other hand, the energy, the total energy is different because now you are going to deal with the relativistic mass m multiplied still by the c squared. So, this is the energy associated with the object when it is not in motion. This is the energy of the, uh, associated with the object when it is in motion, okay? So, or rather the total energy that it has. So if we figure out the difference between these two, in a sense, that would tell us how much motion energy was there. So the kinetic energy then is simply the subtraction of both of those E's, the E and the E sub zero, or E naught. Okay. But we know that the relativistic mass is supposed to be gamma, the Lorentz factor, multiplied by m0. And then, of course, we still have multiplied by c squared. So as you can see here, uh, if we substitute these two here, we should end up with gamma m0 c squared minus m0 c squared. Okay, good. So the most important thing for you to realize for now is the fact that kinetic energy in special theory of relativity has to be the total energy uh, that the object has, okay, due to whatever relativistic mass it has at the time, mi minus whatever the rest energy is. When you do the subtraction of those two, you will be able to figure out how much kinetic energy. So, rest energy, total energy, kinetic energy. Please keep that in mind because you're going to be needing it for whatever problems that you may solve later on your own. Now, at this point here, I've got m0 and m0 here, I've got c squared and c squared, so I can pull out. So right now, by the way, what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to see how we could express this in such a way that it could be used in so many different ways, including in the classical sense. So k then is equal to, I'm going to pull out the m0. Oh, great. Thank you. Silly me. So here we go. Sorry about that. So here we go. So m0 c squared multiplied by gamma minus 1. Because if I multiply this back again, I should be able to end up with the, you know, get these terms all over again. Okay. Now we know that gamma is supposed to be equal to 1 over the square root of 1 minus v over c, the whole thing squared. Or as you saw it in class, v squared over c squared. Either way, it's fine. Now, at this point, I would like to rewrite this, mathematically speaking, as 1 minus v over c, the whole thing squared, the whole thing raised to the power negative 1 half. 
please pause and try to make sense of this yourself mathematically. I'm not going to teach you math. This is physics. Now, at this point then, I'm going to end up with k equals m0 c squared. And then, instead of this gamma now, I'm going to put this expression 1 minus v over c, the whole thing squared, the whole thing raised to the power negative 1 half minus minus 1. Uh, silly me here. Okay. I'm being a little bit redundant there, so I'm going to take this off. Oh, boy. Here we go. Good. At this point, my friends, if we are dealing with a classical case, meaning if the speeds of the moving object is not, uh, is not uh, the speeds are not relativistic, then V is very small by comparison to C. You probably have not seen this before, but this is a, uh, something physicists use to indicate something is very small by comparison to something else. Well, if that's the case, that means our V over C is very small by comparison to what? I'm going to have to erase the board, and then we'll continue when we get back. Keep in mind here, this is the relativistic expression, and what I'm trying to do right now, we're saying if, if this condition is true, then we are in the classical domain, so we would be able to see how the kinetic energy would, formula would look like in the classical uh, domain. So when we get back after I erase, I'll be happy to continue with this. Thank you. So uh, the last part that we got to uh, in this case is we said if the velocity of the given object is very small by comparison to uh, the speed of light, meaning we're not dealing with relativistic speeds, we would like to see how does the formula for the kinetic energy would look like in that case. Now, when you have this condition here, something mathematically cool happens. And the mathematical cool deal is as follows. This equation becomes an almost equal to m0 c squared. And instead of this, believe it or not, all you would have to do is just take this power and you put it right here in front of this term. So it becomes like this. 1, negative 1 half times negative 1 right there, that would give you positive 1 half. And then v squared over c squared and you still have this minus 1. Now, you may say, hey, wait, 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 wait. What kind of math is going to allow you to do that? Well, it turns out, my friends, I'm going to, uh, you know, do a little thing here, you know, for temporarily, and then we're going to have to erase it, and then I'll continue with working with this. So, in math, you learn that if you have 1 plus x, for example, to the power 1, that would be 1 plus x. And if you have 1 plus x to the power 2, that would be 1 plus 2x plus x squared. And if you have 1 plus x to the power 3, then it would be 1 plus 3, you know, x plus 3x squared plus x to the power 3. Now, the beauty of all this is if the if and this is a big F, of course, if the x is very small by comparison to 1, then from a, you know, a standpoint of approximations, the x squared will be almost 0. So will this. So will this be. So you end up really with a situation where this is 1 plus x, as if the 1 came down here. And this it is as if the 2 came down here and it became 1 plus 2x. And this as if the 3 came down here and it became 1 plus 3x. You see the gist of this. So this does not mean that you have to have whole numbers in order for you to be able to establish that. You could actually do it for even fractional powers. So the negative 1 half, that's what came down here. So that's the justification of that.
Okay? I'd like you please to, you know, th uh, to believe me, what you could do, you could substitute numbers here, for example, substitute 0.1 and then 0 0.01, and then 0 0.001, and keep doing that, and you'll see that the approximation that we uh, claimed here actually gives you a result that is very close to the actual result if you do not ignore any of those stuff. Let's pause right now until I finish the erasing, and then we'll get back and continue. So now I hope that I have convinced you to some degree or to some sense that this idea that I've done here is not really, you know, uh, a magic trick or anything like that, but it is valid as long as the V over C, as we are claiming it here, to be very, very small by comparison to 1. Now, the beauty of all this is the 1 and the negative 1 are going to cancel out. And so will the C squared and the C squared. So you end up with, classically, with 1 half, and then there is the M0, and then the V squared. Believe it or not, my friends, this is the classical formula for kinetic energy. With some squeaky sounds there. So, as you can see here, of course, uh, when, when, the, uh, when the velocity is not a relativistic velocity or speed, then at that point, the, you know, the mass of the object at rest as well as, you know, in motion is the same. And that's why in the classical picture, we don't put almost equal, we just put equal. That's because we don't notice that much of a difference when an object is moving, you know, uh, with velocities that are relatively small by comparison to, let's say, half C or things like that. Okay, so... As you can see then, this is the formula that we use in classical physics. We don't have to put the M0 anymore because we usually put it as K equals half mass times V squared. And in the classical picture, we do not differentiate between, you know, uh, the mass at rest and the mass while the object is moving. Of course, if we are dealing with relativistic uh, speeds, then at that point, whether we like it or not, we would have to definitely write the kinetic energy not using this formula because it would not be accurate. We will have to use the E minus E zero that we showed in earlier uh, clips. Thank you.